Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bloodhaven Podcast, episode number 73. As always, I'm your host, Belfort Wong, and today I'm joined with... Buddy. Uh, so a few updates before we jump into the episode. I want to thank everybody who came out last night to our uh, Madness Monday stream. Uh, for those who weren't able to show up, we played through the game uh, Who Goes There? It's a board game that's based off of the science fiction novel of the same name. Um, if you guys have ever seen John Carpenter's The Thing... Uh, it's essentially that. Uh, the whole idea is to try to survive the 15 rounds by maintaining human um, without turning into the thing. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we might uh, play it sometime in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, so a huge shout out to everyone who came by yesterday. It was a lot of fun. Um, make sure to stop by the Twitch channel on Thursday. But he's going to continue his playthrough of Death Stranding. Uh, and then Friday, I will be playing through League of Legends, uh, trying to grind some more stuff out of there. Uh, there's also a brand new video uh, on the site. Um, Buddy got to lead the charge on this one. They played through the game Jungle Cruise. Never again. It was uh, it was very <clears throat> interesting to <laughs> to to watch you guys. Yeah. Um, so that video is up on the site. Um, but if you guys are watching us on YouTube, it'll be on the YouTube channel next Monday. Um, but other than that, I guess we could just jump into the episode. So today we're going to talk a little bit about travel, um, our experience with traveling, uh, where we've traveled to and stuff like that. Uh, reason why is because this past weekend, uh, me and my girlfriend traveled up to California after a year and a half of not going anywhere. Um, it was so nice. It was so nice to finally get out of town. Um, you know, she and I got our second shot of vaccinations, uh, three weeks ago. So we decided, hey, why the fuck not just go up to California? Um, and I don't regret it in the slightest. <laughs> um, one of the things that she and I really, really missed was like road trips. Mm. Um, you know, like just staying in the car, having like crappy snacks, um, like to eat while you're just driving through nothingness for hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. there's, there's something very... Um, like comfortable and serene about just driving like miles and miles away in the car. Um, like have, so for you have you, like, what's the longest road trip you've ever been on? Uh, driving or not driving? Driving. Uh, four hours. Not bad. Not bad. Where to? Uh, to go see Alice for the most part and just drive up there in, uh, Blythe. Oh, okay. So like right next to the, next to the border yep. of California. Yeah. Well, it's actually not a bad town. <clears throat> it's it's, not, it's, it's small. small. That's it. it's, just, it's just small. It's a very small town. Yeah, when we were coming back, um, we were going to stop in Blythe, but we had more than enough gas, so we went to Quartzsite. But um, yeah, like those those towns, like we're, we were asking, because we were just like, what the fuck do people do in these towns? Because they're so small. And like yeah. all you really see is like a gas station, some fast food restaurants, and then like like rv parks and then like small houses yeah <laughs> so i like we always wonder like wow how, how does it how is it living in a small town like this i really wonder yeah it's just uh mostly just going more towards other towns <laughs> yeah, it's like getting out of where you're from yeah basically it's all <laughs> just wow. i mean it's fine with me but it is fun though because like when you're on when you're on road trips and stuff like that like you can stop into these cities and, and kind of see you know what mm -hmm. kind of fun stuff that they have. Um, like on our way up there uh, towards Quartzsite, there is a, like a beef jerky store that Ooh. they have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like B and I try to stay with, away from meat as much as we can. But we're just like, hey, we're here. Why don't we just stop by and, try and just see what it is? So they had like 20 something flavors of jerky. It was like an insane amount. I think amount. that's what my dad was talking about when when they were like driving through something, and I mentioned like there was like this place that had like flavors of jerk, and you can remember. It. Maybe it's over, maybe it's in there. Yeah, it's it's probably courtside because it's like they have a giant sign that's like jerk, like jerky, like the jerky, okay, I gotta, blah 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 blah. You gotta um, think about that real quick. I'll have to open it for you because we we actually bought some. It was like a sweet, it was like a sweet and hot jerky, but it wasn't like spicy. Ooh, yeah, it was like the flavor profile of, okay. of a pepper. Um, right. But that was shit ton of stuff. But yeah, so we got that, um, and they had like some weird um, type of sodas, like glass bottled sodas, and then like a shit ton of hot sauce. Oh, God. like a crazy amount of hot sauce. They had um, they had, what was it? They had you fired hot sauce, and it was like Donald Trump on a bottle. Oh my God! And then like right after that, it was um, 
oh god what was it it was like excommunicado never again hot sauce and it was like another one of donald trump <laughs> it was it was pretty funny they, they had a lot of interesting hot Dear sauces fucking god. um but you know, no i mean like that's one of the fun things about road trips is no, being able is. to stop into like those small towns and yeah. you know because there's there's always like some type of novelty there item, is no there is um whether it's a coffee cup or you know like a shot glass or something like that so um that's one of the things that I miss the most. So I'm I'm really hoping that we can make a road trip out to Louisiana to see our Ooh. parents because I know I know for a fact New Mexico has some cool stuff. Texas definitely has yeah, some meth. cool. <laughs> Sorry, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll bring you some back. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like I know Texas has some cool spots because no, Texas is fucking huge, literally um, huge, huge um but yeah i mean you know i, I really look forward to that because yeah there there is really something that just cannot take away uh just a road trip yeah um though i will say fly because i used to be a very frequent flyer yeah i mean you were a very avid flyer yeah like i would fly almost <sighs> everywhere yeah like almost three four times a year yeah um that's about right and because of the pandemic you know like flying I haven't been able to fly anywhere. <laughs> so I, I'm re- I am looking forward to being able to jump on a flight again. Um, Cause that's also like a, a whole other like culture in it all in itself, you know, like with the, with the car ride, you have the comfort of being in the car and just packing your car up and, and going, mm-hmm. but with like flying, it's very much like compact. Like you're like, you know, I have my backpack and like maybe, maybe like a roll on, you know? Yeah. Um, if you're a if you're if you're a frequent flyer you, you have it down pat um like you have your pair of shoes that you change into and, and yada 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 and like that's something that i strangely miss like i miss having like the whole routine of getting into an airport mm-hmm. um and i'm 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 really looking forward to to doing that again um when because i know that you've traveled uh what what is what are your pros and cons of airport travel the seating Dude, for real. Mostly because here's the thing. I may have lost a bit of weight, but I'm still a big motherfucker. And like middle seats are my enemy. And that's all they have on air flights. And that's all they fucking have on flights is like usually middle seats. You're lucky if you get an aisle seat. It's just that that's the one thing. I guess that's my my biggest gripe is the fact that it from a big guy's perspective. Yeah, just the seating is horrible. And for your people who are saying like, well, why don't you get business class or first class? You know how much that shit's expensive. fucking expensive? It's so expensive. Um, and it, it sucks for like, I, and I get it, you know, I get it from a business standpoint that, you know, smaller the seats, the more people you can have on a flight, yeah. the, more, the more seats you can sell. Um, but no, it does suck. Like, even for me, like, I'm not, I'm not a big dude. No, but it's... But like, even for me, like, it is, it feels very tight. It's very compact. Yeah, yes. it's like, because like, also my shoulders are like a little wider. Uh, so it's uh, like, uh. even when I sit, I'm like, up against someone and I feel like I have to like, yeah, put my arms together. Um, so I can only imagine how it is for you. Um, it used to get to the point where like, I needed like a second seatbelt because it's like, I couldn't get it over. Oh man. See, that sucks too because it's like, that's not inherently your you're like your fault yeah like because you're just a big dude in general and the fact that you would have to buy two seats well that's not two seats it's just more like having to swallow your embarrassments like excuse me that the seat belt doesn't go over and so they had to give me like an extra oh an extension extension. i forgot that they have those wow yeah i wow that's wild i didn't even think about that yeah wow yeah um but Actually, you know, since we're talking about that, you know, when because you flew out to Florida to go to um, Disney World, Disney World, and DC, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like for Disney World in particular, were there any rides where like you were unable to to ride on? Uh yes and no. It's mostly the ones that you think are mostly like made for like families, usually mm-hmm. like. I can usually ride those. Right, right, right. Because it's like, it's just like, it's a small bar that you just keep here. It's not like, you know, they have it up to your fucking Yeah, gut, like, like a it's not coaster. like the over the shoulder or like. Those ones I cannot do anymore. The really? The shoulders. Because I remember when I was younger, I didn't think this was also my fault too. It was, I forget the name of it where like it, you have like two different seats. This was back at Pima County Fair actually. Um, 
I'm like, describe it and I'll tell yeah, you what it is. It's <laughs> where like it, you can like hang upside down and it just like swings back and forth. And oh that. yeah. Is it the, you're not talking about the one that's a claw, right? You're, no. ta- you're talking about the one that is, um, almost looks like a hammer or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So like, it's like a, a giant thing that does this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think they call it the jackhammer actually. Uh, something like that. Yeah. But I remember it had the ones where you go over your shoulders and that shit hurt like a mug. And when I, I think like three days later, I had like a big old, fu- not like a bruise, but like Oof. it showed yeah. where it was like putting so much pressure. Oh, that sucks. Well, and I figured, well, I think, it, well, cause that ride in particular, it holds you up. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's why. I so that's probably why that shit hurt. Yeah. But mostly for anything else, I think I've been okay. Uh, cause there's, for Disney World, there's not really like fast rides like like um like if it was like yeah uh, even their even their Space Mountain is very yeah, tame. It's just making you <laughs> feel like you're going fast. Yeah, but everything. Yeah, I've been able to do most of that stuff. Fuck yeah, man, that's awesome. Well, I only ask because I know that there's some people who are like, unfortunately, yeah, like the restraint has to hit a certain point. Yeah, and you know they they I I've been in line with people who like literally bawled their eyes out. Because they were too big to get on the ride. And they're just like, listen, like, this is a safety issue. Like, yeah. you don't understand. I get you're upset, but you, like, it's a safety, we yeah, could no, not I, have you on here. It's a safety issue, which is yeah. fine. But, uh, no, that's crazy. So, uh, your flight to Florida, um, how was how was that? Because I know I flew. Do we fly on the same? We did once. Yeah, once. We did once. I don't remember that very well. I just I remember being having a layover in Texas. Yeah. And like everyone freaking out over someone because someone was in the terminal. Do you remember that? I don't fucking remember. Because I, I was Because I, no I was like in a group with like Alex. Oh man. I just remember Alex. Alex, Michael, Ashley, and someone else. I was with uh who the fuck was I with? I don't, even remember, I, know, who, like, I don't even remember who the fuck I was with. I remember who I was with with when uh when I did like the when the uh the, they went to fucking DC. I was with like Darren fucking Brian. Oh, uh, dude, Darren, how's Darren doing? Have I you been with Darren? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen Darren in forever. While. I ran into him at Comic Con because he oh, has shit. a he has an Oogie Boogie outfit. Oh, okay. And uh, I think it was two years ago. Uh, and like I had, I had like run into him, and I knew it was Darren, but I don't think he recognized me because I like I I've seen his costume online mm-hmm. multiple times, and I was like, hey, and that was about it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I don't remember who the fuck I was with on that one. Wow. Well, so your trip for DC was there anything like memorable like during the flight? Uh, I wouldn't say I don't know if it's memorable. It was just like uh. I think it's just more the conversations you can tend to have when you're in a in a in a flight. Because <laughs> there's nothing else. Because there's do. really nothing fucking else to do unless you like blare music in your headphones, watch a like a, on a portable DVD player. And people are not gonna fucking know what I'm talking about either. Way. I know that's what I was just thinking too. I no one's like, gonna understand oh, portable man. DVD players at all, or just like, uh, uh, or like, yeah, just having something where you can entertain it, like a laptop. There we go. Having a laptop, being yeah, able to play yeah. music, or if you're lucky, have like a few downloaded games you can just mess around with. But the, the, you know, you actually brought up because <laughs> you talked about the portable DVD player. Now, now I'm thinking about like all the times I went on road trips, and I had my CD player. Yeah, with that had the like anti uh, skipping feature, yeah. which is bullshit. Um, but yeah, like those were the things to keep you occupied. That's fucking. I that I did not think about that. That's actually really funny. Um, I don't remember whether or not you charged it for the trip. Yeah, or make sure that you had enough extra batteries to to be there. Oh, oh my god! And now we just have like you know the the extended battery packs and everything. Yeah, what a true. different time, right? <laughs> oh man, that's really the only thing I can say is just like having decent conversations with people. Like I remember one, I thought there was like a woman who was like almost like she was like middle age, roughly. Mm-hmm. She's never been on a flight in her life, and she was just like having a conversation with me. It was like it, it, they say the landing is a hard part. Is that true? It's like that depends on the pilot. It really does depend yeah. on the pilot for landing. Yeah. It's like sometimes it'll be smooth and you don't really feel it. Maybe you'll feel like the tug and that's it. And then there's some where it's like your face is on the back Yeah, because I can tell you there are so many times where like there's been really, really bad turbulence and I've had like the smoothest landing ever. Other times, super smooth. Nothing else is happening in the air, but the landing is rough as fuck. Yep. And, you know, obviously we're not 
pilots or whatever. But yeah, my, no, no, we're not pilots at all. My my dad was a pilot, and you know he also had kind of voiced that same opinion, where it's like he he hates flying commercially because he doesn't necessarily he can't trust control. Yeah. yeah, he's like he can't he's not in control it. of it. Um, but no, I mean like yeah, it's. The the landings can be really frightening sometimes. Yeah. I think the one time I think the only time I was ever scared on a flight was when there was like very bad turbulence. I'm over there going in on the consciousness consciousness because I want to fucking sleep, and then there was like a huge drop. And, and last thing I remember is people screaming. Oh my god! And I was like, huh? What's going on? <laughs> I fucking freaked the fuck out. Yeah, there was um my flight back home. I think it was the second time I went to Australia. My flight coming home from Sydney to LA, Mm -hmm. there was like really, really bad turbulence. And I think it was the only time I was ever like super frightened on a plane ride. Um, Because like we were going and we felt the turbulence, but like we felt the plane do this. Like we felt it go up first. Oh, and then it dropped. Oh, God. Yeah. And, like, everyone, like, was just like, what the fuck? Because, like, it was one of those things where, like, your heart, like... Yeah. Like, your gut You felt up. everything just, like... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, like, after that, everything was perfectly fine. But it was, like, that one thing. Everyone was like, ah! It's <laughs> like, yeah, I can fucking make a diamond with these cheeks right now. Just... <laughs> yeah. And, and I think the reason why I freaked out was because it was like, okay, like, I felt this thing drop. I'm over the fucking Pacific ocean ocean yeah. right now like there's nothing in between sydney and la like like yeah. it's just it's just openness ocean, yeah. yeah so like my brain was just like holy shit this is how i die yeah that's <laughs> why i think one of the main reasons too at least for my mother too she won't fly because of that reason if she ever like if she does she'll only fly within the states if she ever flies outside she's afraid because it's like you know there's nothing or even take cruises yeah. for that matter it's like, which which is honestly like very interesting because like flying <laughs> you you're the statistics of you dying in a, in any type of plane accident is super small. Yeah. Like, you are more likely to die in a car accident than you are an airplane. Granted, you know, I know people are going to start this argument of, like, well, you drive more than you fly. Yes, that is true. But statistically, even looking at just accidents in general, yeah. you have flights going all the time. Um, there's still not as many accidents than there are, you know, for autom- automobiles. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I totally get that. My, like my Nana was the same way for years and I know that she still is frightened to fly, but she will get on planes to go and, and visit new places. Um, and I, and I totally get it. Like, you know, especially with younger kids who I know, well, I guess I know a lot of people who are, <coughs> but, oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know a lot of like younger people who are afraid to fly because of like nine eleven and stuff like like people our age. Yeah, like yeah. I know people who are like deathly afraid of flying because they're just like, oh, what's gonna happen? Um, but you want me? I'm 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 ready for it. <laughs> hell yeah, dude! I'm like, put me on a flight. Let's go. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, I think it's one of those things where like go on a, go on a flight, see how you feel, mm. and then like you, over time, like you'll feel a little more comfortable. Like even me, who was a freaking flyer, like there are still times where I'm like, oh, this feels weird. Because, you know, humans aren't meant to fly. <laughs> yeah, humans aren't meant to be so high in the fucking air. <laughs> yeah, so if like... If they did, we would have been given wings. So like your instinct is like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> no, I, I highly recommend it. If you guys have never taken a, a, a flight before, um, you know, just, just take a flight to like the next city over um, and just experience it. Yeah. At least once if you can. I think the only time I, I, I just wanted to, like one of the things you're saying, try it once. I just want to see what it feels like to fly business or fucking first class. Just, just, just to, just to feel how fucking bougie it is. Because yes, there are films or shows that like basically not necessarily glorify, but yeah. show like what it is like. And I'm just like, I wonder if it's the same thing or just, or like even like YouTube videos that I see where mm-hmm. like certain um, flight companies were, but uh it's not necessarily all economy or whatever. It's just like basically one big fucking like first class flight. Oh yeah. Like not necessarily private flights, but yeah. like, like a very, a very exclusive. Yes. Yeah. No, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It's like, it looks cool. And it just, from me, my perspective, it's like, I want to try that at least once. Well, see, that's one of the things that I, w- I miss being a frequent flyer because so one of the things with being a frequent flyer is you actually accumulate points. Uh, um, like when you book your, when you mm-hmm. book your, when you book your flight, how far the flight is like mileage wise um you get points and with points as like as you accumulate them you get into like different tiers so like you have like the base tier then you have like the silver tier gold tier diamond tier whatever so like 
if you fly more, you get these benefits because essentially you're spending your life on a flight. Yeah. Um, and those people are the ones that typically get like the business class and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, well, you're living on a plane at this point. We might as well give you some accommodation. And I know for a fact that like business class, I've flown business class twice and business class is, it's okay. Like yeah. you, get, you get slightly more room, um, like between the, the, the seats and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's not a whole lot of, uh, like it's also, you get like closer to the front of the plane as well. Um, so yeah, it is nice, but it's not worth the extra money if you have to pay for it. Oh, no, that's fair. Like if you if you get it as a perk, like as a free upgrade, because I know some airlines do that every so often. Fucking take. It. But I would never pay for business class, mm-hmm. let alone first class. First class tickets are stupid. Oh yeah, expensive. no, but it's just it's just one of those things that just at least once you see how what it's like. But yeah, yeah, I'm actually gonna look up um, what a first class ticket on American Air Airways is. I bet you it's probably over a thousand dollars. I'm betting right now. So well, it depends. So, so let's say let's say that we're gonna book a flight um, from Tucson to uh, Florida. Sure. Because because why not, right? Because those are the two opposite ends. So we'll so we'll just say d- d- uh, Daytona, right? Yeah, Daytona. We'll, uh, we'll say we're we're living on Friday and returning on next Friday. We'll just say for a week for one person. Um. So searching and loading. Um, actually, a round trip ticket's not bad. Uh, so for the main cabin, which would be essentially just the economy class, uh, we can get a round trip ticket to Florida for four hundred and fifty-two dollars. Yeah. It's not bad. Not too shabby. Get the same thing for a first class ticket. Is that right? Is that right? One thousand nine hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Fucking knew it. Over a thousand. <laughs> Holy crap. But in all fairness, like I know that's a lot of money. It's not as expensive as I thought it was. Yeah. Um for a round trip. Um Jesus Christ, that is crazy. Yeah. I thought about this when I uh was like, I wonder how much would it be just to fly to like to go see someone in Alaska. And yeah, it's roughly the same thing, like four hundred bucks for just economy. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, that's not too terrible because that's essentially two hundred dollars, you know, each way. Yeah. Um, which it honestly feels expensive, but in terms of like how much the economy has changed, is not that drastic of a change. Yeah. Especially because Ala- Alaska, Alaska is so far from Arizona. Yeah. Because how how far is that travel? Uh, depend if it's uh, I actually did all this too. If if you're driving that shit, that's like a sixty-two hour drive. Woo. For flying, I think it's like a with layovers, like seven, maybe. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Um, That's including this layovers. would be so. This one is for um, Anchorage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you would have to go from Tucson to Phoenix, Phoenix <laughs> to Anchorage, which I think is fucking stupid. That is so dumb because the fucking flight from Tucson to Phoenix is like forty minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better. That's why a lot of people don't like taking the airport here. They go straight to fucking Phoenix because it's easier. Yeah, especially for like longer flights and everything. It also but it, tends to be cheaper too. It's also weird though, because then like then you have instances where like if you're flying from Tucson to like New York, you then you just fly from Tucson to fucking Houston mm-hmm. and then go up to New York. Like it's I don't I don't get the way. There's that ones that I saw work. where it's like I don't even cut through Phoenix at all. Where I get I cut through Seattle and then get there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because it depends on what what part of the um state or country you're going to. Yeah. But hey, overall, hey, if you want a first class ticket to Anchorage, it's only seventeen hundred dollars for round trip. Jesus for first class. fucking Christ! You know, not too much. <laughs> yes, I, I have like over three thousand dollars to fucking burn in my pocket right now. Like, There's also only one seat left for this for this flight if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> man that's that's creamy that's crazy um did you about to say that's creamy that's creamy <laughs> bruh <laughs> but yeah no i mean it's 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 great like yeah it is you essentially pay for what you get but i i don't think first class is really, really all up. Yeah. yeah it's like you're just paying more for luxury yeah because i mean like for first class tickets like you get your own little cubby right yeah you get your cubby, you get a blanket, you get a pillow, and then like you get like specific snacks that you can choose from. Um, but it's like, 
honestly, it's not like I would much rather save that money to spend more money at the new location that I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, obviously I don't live there. I'm traveling to visit. Yeah, of course. So might as well just save it to explore. Um, cause I know, I know we want to go back to Louisiana really bad. I haven't been to Louisiana in almost 10 years. Oh, damn. Yeah. So, and now that I'm with someone whose family is out there, it's like, Hey, let's use those connections. <laughs> Get you some of that Cajun food. You know what I'm saying? Dude, fucking like crawfish. Oh my God. So, so good. good. It's so good down there. Uh, jambalaya down there. It's like, mwah. the only place that, has a little bit of taste of Louisiana, which I'm pretty sure I'm more than likely a little bit. Popeyes. No, actually. <laughs> Papa Do's. Papa Do's? I don't think yeah. I've ever been there. There, The only reason why I remember is that me and my my mother and I uh, and my dad, we went to, I forget what we were doing. I think it was going to California or no, we were going to a Renaissance festival. That's what it was. And we stopped at a hotel and a hotel was literally, we went to go look for something to eat. We couldn't find anything. And then literally across the street from the hotel was a Papa Dos. Ooh. And that place just looks like it's the, when you go this inside, it looks good. It looks like you're in like a, some place in New Orleans. They have private dining. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. We didn't care because we had like fucking fried <laughs> alligator and that shit was delicious. Wow. So they, yeah, they have a ton of different things. So they have uh Papacitos Cantina, mm-hmm. Papa's, Papa's Bros Steakhouse, Papa's Seafood House, Papa's Barbecue, Papa's Burgers, Ya Ya Mari's Papa's, Mediterranean Kitchen, <laughs> Dot Coffee Shop, Papa's Delta Blues, and Smokehouse. Yeah. This looks bomb. Where, where, where are you guys at when you guys check this out? Because uh, uh, we were, it was in, we were checking out the Renaissance Festival here and there. And... Oh, so you guys went up to like the Phoenix area. Yeah. Was up to, like, but I don't know if it's still there anymore is the thing. Uh, it says it's there. Oh, fucking all right. Yeah, that place Phoenix. is delicious. All right, so we're going to have to go up to Phoenix and uh Because I think they had, I had like a, like a Cajun shrimp pasta or whatever that they had there. Uh, oh, my God. It was so good. That sounds awesome. Was, I've never been to Papa Do's. I, re- I would recommend it, honestly. That shit was... Mm. Y'all should check it out. There's a ton of locations. Uh, they have some in Phoenix, Albuquerque, Greenwood Village, Fort Worth, Bedford, Grapevine, uh, DFW Inside Airport Terminal A, DFW Inside Airport Terminal C, Texas Rangers Stadium. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. That took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I just, I miss, there, there's certain cuisines that I'm like, hello? Yeah. Yeah, that was a hair. <clears throat> um, there there are certain um like cuisines that I really miss. Like I know for me, I'm super critical about Chinese food here. Oh, like there, there are there are some places that are really good here, but like when we went out to LA, I was like, just melt my face off because it's so good. Um, but like Arizona, definitely like Tucson specifically has amazing Mexican food. It does, and it's like no, it does. I I, I commend places for trying their best for certain cuisines, and you know I will I'll give them. I'll, I will give them the benefit of the doubt, but there's a certain things that you just cannot replicate somewhere else. No, you can't. And like pff, Louisiana soul food, man. Mm. Mm, so fucking good. Mm. And it's the same thing, like going to like New York and, and Boston and like having like a, like a clam chowder or, or something like that. Like it's just can't get anywhere else. Even like pizza on the East coast. Like I love pizza. East coast pizza is the shit. And, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure how true this is, but like a while ago, I read an article about how, because um, obviously East Coast water and West Coast water is different. Yeah. You have like hard water and soft water, um, and there's different minerals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Apparently, on the East Coast, their water, when they mix it with their dough, really has a completely different flavor than like West Coast. Um, that makes sense. Which is why, and I noticed this too, if you eat like dominoes here on the west coast any dominoes on the east coast the flavor profile is different not not like extremely different but you can definitely taste like there there's a strange difference in between the two with the dough specifically um so you know what that's why you win this one east coast there's certain things that you get right it's just like uh oh what are those what are those italian desserts called um which ones Cannolis? Cannolis. <clears throat> yeah, cannolis. There's a place here in town that's right off of, um, it's right next to you, actually. It's off of uh, 22nd and Kolb. No, 22nd and, yeah, 
No, 22nd and Pantano. Okay. It's like a small Italian deli place. They have some of the best fucking cannolis I've ever I've had. I looked at it. Yeah, you have to check it out. But, uh... I mostly just go to La Caves. <laughs> Dude, La Caves is bomb! <clears throat> it is. No, it definitely is. Like, I haven't been to La Caves... I haven't been to La Caves since they got the new location. Because yeah. I, I used to go to La Caves when it was down on... Uh, what was it 4th Street? Mm-hmm. Right next to um, Santa yeah. Cruz Church? yeah. That's when I used to fucking get them all the time. But ever since the new one, I think I've only gone to them once because they have a vegan donut. Mm-hmm. That shit's good. Uh, if you're in Tucson, go to La Caves. It's on Speedway? They think. I don't know, man. I I got used to the one being downtown ever since I was a kid. Because that place was amazing. Yeah. It, it was one of those... It, it was a... It was a donut shop where, like, the tiles on the ground were, like, rotting and being peeled up. Yep. Like, it was, it, it was one of those, like, ghetto-ass stores. It looked like it was what they call a hole in the wall, but it was but a it, fucking good hole in the wall. Yeah, no, this shit was And awesome. they're still good, in my opinion. And, I mean, the only reason why they moved was because, essentially, that building that they were in was, was just the deteriorating. Become, yeah, it was, was going to be condemned. Yeah, like they, they, like, they couldn't do anything else to the building to Mm-mm. keep it afloat. Um, but yeah, so if you're in Tucson, go to the caves. It is on 22nd and Alvernon. Uh, it's right next to the Taco Bell. It's really, really freaking good. Um, but, uh, what, what are some places that you want to travel to? Uh, like that are like, there, there are specific cities that like you have to travel to at least once in your life. Uh, well, uh, in States, there's, I mean, it's still like a couple places. Like I still want to visit friends and other people like in other places, like, uh, like I mentioned, Alaska, maybe mm-hmm. visit more parts of California that I haven't seen or even fucking like anything North. Yes, basically. <laughs> or, f- or, uh, fucking, what was another one? Or like, what well, my, my dad even had this idea too, of like traveling up to like Maine at one point as like a road trip. Oh my God. Like a cross country. Yeah. Like a cross country thing. And I was like, that was excited for that. But of course, like, you know, shit goes you know south when things happen. Yeah. But I think my main thing I've always wanted to do is like travel to Europe specifically and like check out like Berlin and all that Fuck stuff. Yeah, dude. Or like, I one time when I was still like a huge pothead, my thing was like go to fucking Amsterdam, check out the red light district, <laughs> and all this other shit and everything. But now I've gotten older, I still check it out. But I'm um, but yeah, as, I feel like that's something that's just like a novelty, fun spot yeah. to just go yeah, to. Yeah, or 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 I'm not gonna say like fucking France or anything like that, but it just they those are place nice places. But I, I feel like that's those are like heavy tourist areas at this point. They they are so as someone who has been there. I will say that yes, it is kind of heavy on the tourism, but if you kind of explore the city more, because yeah. because the good thing about like like Paris and and cities like that, right over in in Europe, they're actually much smaller than you think. Mm-hmm. Like they're pretty condensed, yeah. and like it's easy to like get on the metro and go to a new area, um, and it's not as in your face as it is here like you know when you like go to like san francisco or yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah it's like merca like yeah you know like throw all the merchandise at you this one is just like small fucking places for like tourists to look at I'm yeah, yeah yeah like, yeah like oh, out there it's more like carts that kind of have like your stereotypical novelty stuff yeah. yeah but there's a ton a ton of places in europe that are just awesome yeah um so like we we should fucking go, dude. Let's fucking make like just, a trip out of it. Let's Europe fucking... would be nice. Or like, <laughs> I thought about this. But I think this is just like the weeb talking to me. I've always wanted to take a trip to Japan. I want to go to Japan. I want to go to even, Japan a lot. Or even fucking Korea, South Korea. Just like check out their shit. Oh my god, just like just enjoy that. You know? Yeah, I think because there's a lot of stuff even here that is better over there. <laughs> obviously, yes, yes. Mostly food, <laughs> and it's fucking cheap too. <sighs> um. But yeah, no, I mean, like, traveling is super fun. I'm actually really happy to hear that you want to travel abroad because, like, you know, there are there are, there are some really cool spots here in America, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, like, New York is always cool to go to. You have yeah. San Francisco. There's a, there's a ton of different towns here in I the States. I want to get yelled cool. at by people in the street. I'll just go out at fucking Fourth Avenue at 12 at, <laughs> 12 at night when it's on a Saturday. If I want to get yelled at You're by people. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, but no, like, like, I think traveling abroad is is really important because you kind of get an insight on other people's culture too like i know a lot of people have a perception on how people live in different countries 
But once you visit there and see, one, how cultured everybody is, it's such a different feeling. Um, how fucking nice everybody is. Like, going to a shop in England, it, it feels very welcoming. <laughs> As opposed to here where it's like, you, you get two things here in, in the States, right? You either get that Southern comfort, like, Oh, welcome! Like you know, you know or that, you get that like, hospitality, what the fuck do you or you want? get what the fuck do you want. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no the in between. Yeah, there's no balance. <laughs> and I felt like when we were in England, like there was that balance of like familiarity, but like understanding like why you're there. You know, mm-hmm. it's like okay, obviously you're here. I'm here to serve you. What do you want? Yeah. You know, um, and that's you know, I, I think traveling really does help you kind of understand a little bit more about the world. Um, plus you get to see some cool ass stuff. I mean, when we went to Europe, we saw, um, Stonehenge like oh, yeah. in person, which was a fucking trip to actually see. Cause it's like one thing to see it like on, on pictures and oh, stuff, yeah, but like course. to physically be where like these monoliths are is insane. Um, we saw that we got to go up, um, the Eiffel tower, which was a fucking trip. That's, that's scary. Oh um, yeah, I gotta assume that's fucking scary. They have so they when you visit the the Eiffel Tower, I'm not sure if they still do this, but you essentially have three different tiers that you can go up to. So like um they have like a like a box office where you can buy a ticket and you essentially the, the higher you go, the more expensive the ticket is. Um but essentially like the first floor and you can see this when you look at the um the oh, it has Tower. like a little diagram and shit. Well, yeah, well, but you can actually like visually see this if you look at a picture of, oh, okay. of the Eiffel Tower. Like, so like the Eiffel Tower has like a point, right? Mm-hmm. But you have this first level at like the very bottom where you like you're kind of, I don't know how many feet up you are, but you're not that tall. Then you have the second tier, which is just slightly above that one. So there's this elevator that goes at an angle. Oh. Yeah, so like Oh, that's weird. Yeah, so like the elevator is is stationary like this, but it shifts like this oh, as it goes up. It's weird. really fucking cool. But when you hit that second tier, in order to get to the top tier, you go into a fucking glass elevator. Fuck whoever designed well, this Willy elevator. Well, Willy Wonka bullshit that I It is into. scary as shit, especially because when I went, I was only 10 at oh, the time. Oh god. So <clears throat> It's a full glass elevator. And I'm talking like the floor is glass. So this elevator ride is super fucking long because the the second tier is where the point begins to like go up. Nah, I'm taking the next one, chief. <laughs> and it's just a long ass glass elevator. It was the scariest thing in the world because like as a kid, I'm just like, I'm freaking out, looking at my mom. And then I look down like a moron and you just see like instant death. <laughs> like you're just like holy shit I'm just yeah, like it's like you know, they're telling me hey we can get another one I'd be like no I'll take the next one why <laughs> you see what this elevator is made out of right yeah I'll take the next one <laughs> granted it's like industrial glass where it's like that like, still probably, doesn't help a lot probably like 10 inch thick yeah, glass no, but, but still kind of creepy it's terrifying yeah um, but no that, that was crazy because then like as soon as you get off as soon as you get off the elevator you feel the tilt Oh, no. Like, it's one of those buildings oh. that it's, like, it's so high yeah. that you, like, as soon as you step off, you feel yourself do this. Oh, God. And it's not like, it's not like a lot of buildings where, like, you feel like a subtle shift. No, this is like, you feel it's, it. You feel the entire thing go, like. So, I'm pretty sure that they, if anything, <laughs> if it's, like, heavy winds, you can't go on the top tier, if anything. Yeah, I'm assuming so. Because if, if that, I mean, it's France, but, you know. Yeah, but, like, because when we went, it was actually a pretty nice day. It was, like. 69 degrees and yeah nice yeah that's the one thing i do really i really loved about europe is the weather like yeah. everything there like they act one they actually have like seasons seasons <laughs> but two, like, it's here is just like hot mm-hmm. slightly less hot and, or, or just like or if you want to be a bipolar it's like hot slightly less hot. freezing slightly <laughs> less hot yeah exactly um but out there no it was really nice because we went during the summer uh-huh. um like during Ju- the end of june i think is when we went mm-hmm. maybe july and it was still like at the most like 74 degrees and it was it was wild for us you know being tucsonans and going to europe and then watching the news and they're like yep there's a heat wave coming through town and you know make sure uh make sure you're staying cool it's like 74 degrees <laughs> 
all right. And I think it's also funny too. Another thing because there's a lot. Of, that's the one thing I I can also enjoy when going in different places is the culture shock you'll get. Oh, dude. Like yeah. like I like you could see the like what you're saying. Seventy four degrees to them is like a heat wave. To us, it's like oh, that's fucking nice. What do mm-hmm. you mean? Or let's say if it's a I don't know, maybe depending on like California, or whatever. There, everyone's like out there in. Uh, like in Europe, everyone's out there like weren't keeping themselves bummed to love. Me, me, my, you're over there with like a, a thin jacket and some fucking shorts. Like, <laughs> this is nice. Yeah, this is great. This it's is chilly, but it's, it's good. You know that, that kind of shit. Or um, there's one because we talked about culture shock back in college. Uh, somebody was uh, uh was tra- uh, studying abroad in Finland or or some Scandinavian country. I'm wrong. Wow. Where it, it's cold, obviously, and they kept. The little baby carriages outside stores, right, or outside restaurants or what, or cafes, and mm-hmm. they're inside, and the babies were still in the carriages. And Whoa. it's like, but they're all bundled up. They're nice and warm. Yeah. Nothing is wrong. They're okay. And they decided to go like, why do you do that? It's like so they don't get sick. And I now I start understanding because like yeah, the, the, the immediate change in temperature, especially for a child for a baby, mm-hmm. it can be very severe. So it's like it makes sense. They're still bundled up. They're all nice. They're cozy and shit, and they're just outside. But it's as an American, look, it's like, what the fuck? Well, also, Americans have this weird, like, because, like, in other countries, and I've noticed this, too, noticed this as well, is, like, other countries, they are totally okay with, like, putting things and leaving them where they were. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Like, like the baby thing, right? Like, <laughs> you can leave a baby outside, it's going to be fine. No one's going to steal the fucking baby. No one's going to, like, you know, criticize you for doing so. Mm. If that shit happened in America... One, you'd have fucking Janice being like, why the fuck aren't you taking care of your child, and right? CPS coming out of nowhere. Or you'd have, uh, you know, like someone being like, well, your baby just got taken away. Like, <laughs> like it's just, that's like a weird cultural thing that happens in, in America that I've mm-hmm. noticed is like, possessions are everything. Yeah. And like in other countries, it's like people respect each other's property. Like, they're just like, you know, like, they see something on the side, they're like, well, I'm not going to touch that. Like, yeah. obviously, someone's using that, or obviously, something's happening. Not going to touch it. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's like what you're saying. Like, it's just a culture shot thing. It's like, you don't realize how other people live until you experience it. And when you experience it, you, you kind of have an open mind of, like, where things can go, how things can progress, you know. And then it's also really good... I think for us as Americans to really self-reflect on our culture. Yeah. Like, cause one of the things that I'm going to get fucking shut for this. One of the things that I hate about Americans is how, like how we stroke our own ego. Like we're stroking our dick all the time. Yeah. No, I, like yeah. America is amazing. America is the most innovative country in the world. Blah, 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 blah. But like you guys are ignoring all of the great advances of all the other countries. Like tumble yourself <laughs> a little bit, please, please. And at least acknowledge, like, you know, we wouldn't have a lot of the stuff without China. We wouldn't have a lot of the stuff without Germany. Like, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that other countries have and made. And what for I've us noticed to too, like, continue with, forward with like U.S. imperialism, I'll call it, is like they'll change a lot of things. Like, what's a, what's a good example? Here's a good one. Uh, like sauerkraut, we'll call mm-hmm. it. We'll say right. We we know what it basically is. Let's. Uh, but for those who don't know, fermented cabbage. Yeah. So we'll say, like, let's say this is after the First World War, right? And a lot of people did not really, especially in America, did not really care for the Germans at all, for the most part. And so what they would call sauerkraut is freedom cabbage. Oh, my God. Freedom cabbage. Let that sink into your fucking head for a minute. To make America. it American. America. Is they would call it fucking freedom cabbage, all right? And it's just... This, this See, is that's so, small example that's so weird to me yeah and, and you know it does go it does have that imperialism you know uh thought process and i see this all the time on twitter all the time you know because i i'm always trying to look at both sides you know trying mm-hmm. to understand where everyone's coming from but stuff like that like just drives me nuts it's like you already have an established name for a type of cuisine mm-hmm. why are you trying to politicize it why are you trying to be like oh because this originated from this place we need to rename it and rebrand it for our country. It's like, no, like, There's, especially in a country where like our entire thing yeah. is all about immigration. We're and, literally a melting pot of everything else in, in this entire fucking world for the most part. Yeah. Just, like I, I don't, I don't get the mentality of that. Like, yeah. I don't understand how putting America in front of something makes it better. And also another thing too is, um, 
it's probably going to give me a lot of hate too, but you could be, depending on how you want to explain this as well. It's all right. We're alienating our, yeah, our audience. Uh, like the overuse of like what they call cultural appropriation. Oh my God. For like, here's a good example. A lot of people like to try different things with food, right? And if it works, it works, mm-hmm. right? Looking at you, Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> that's too good that's like if like there was i think there was a place i don't know if it was here or somewhere in the states where it's like they were mixing a lot of like hispanic uh mediterranean and some african foods and together but it worked and it showed like very different like it, they 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 didn't necessarily call it something very uh extravagant they just said what it was but and they showed you a little different thing and then people yeah. were like berating it as like this is cultural appropriation because this was started by this well and see this was it, that. It, it's so weird because like cultural pro- appropriation and i feel like people don't really understand what that term actually is like because yeah. appropriation is taking a different culture's well culture right mm-hmm and exploiting it for your own personal gain without understanding what it is. Yeah. You know, for instance, the for Halloween there there is a there was for the longest time an Indian costume, right? Oh, that yeah, was yeah. on the market. Yeah. Oh, it's that true. is cultural appropriation. That's true. Because it's a it has a headdress and it is a Indian style dress, mm-hmm. a ceremonial dress yeah. that has specific meaning to that culture. Mm-hmm. But people just buy it because they're like, "Oh, Indian." Yeah. That's cultural appropriation. But for someone like a, a, rest, a restauranteur, right? Yeah. Someone who loves food and wants to combine different types of cuisine, that's not cultural appropriation. That is someone who loves food and wants to do something new yeah. and introduce people to new flavors. And, you know, there, there's a lot of controversy with, like, you know, hairstyles oh, and, and that, stuff like that. That's a huge and, thing. Which, you know, for me, it, it, it's frustrating because, you know, as someone who, you know, I, I, I did not grow up in Ireland. Yeah. I, do, I do have Irish blood because I, I, am, I am a mutt. Um, <laughs> hey. And I love Irish culture. I love, yeah. like, I love learning about, like, Celtics like, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I do not push that style or anything um in a way that i don't firstly understand yeah you, you know like for for like their music like i love their folk music and i've studied their folk music I've, I've studied their folklore because i love it so much and that's why i play it i wouldn't play those songs if i didn't understand what was going on yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm. like if i were just to go out and perform it and you know play like um uh uh black uh black velvet band right and then someone asked me, he's like, oh, you know, what is that song about? And I'd be like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I just played it. That, to me, that is appropriation because you're using someone else's culture without first understanding why it's important. Um, and, you know, when I was talking about hairstyles, you know, like hairstyles are important to cultures. But as long as the person understands the importance of it and wants to highlight that type of culture... That's not a problem to me. Mm-hmm. But I see so many people online like attacking artists for this type of stuff just because they're not part of that culture. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem that I have because I, I think everyone has the right to experience different cultures. And as long as they understand it and respect it, they should be able to do it. Like I remember when Avril Lavigne came out with um, her Hello Kitty song, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about like J-pop and, and, and everything like that. People gave her so much shit. But it's like, she loves that culture. Like, she loves Japanese culture. Why are you shitting on her when she's trying to expose her audience to something different and something new, and you know that she loves it? Like, why is that Why is that a problem? I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But, you know, I, I know there's so many people online who want to immediately cancel someone because they don't have the context of yeah. why someone is making the art. And it's funny you mentioned that too, because I remember I went through a few things. I, I go down rabbit holes a lot, especially when it's like 4 a.m. And, and I can't sleep. He's our designated like rabbit hole dude. <laughs> <laughs> Was one like when you were talking about the Japanese culture and all that, there is a speci- there, there is like a specific group or like a specific place where they like uh, appreciate like Hispanic culture, for example. Mm. Like one of them is like, they'll have like a shitload of fucking lowriders for the most part. And it's great, but... And then, but of course, you'll also have ones where it's like they have like their their souped up vehicles on, obviously, mm-hmm. and and where like and they but they appreciate like the um, the uh, depending on how you want to look at it, like the 
uh, cholo slash raza culture in, in, okay. in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And the, and when you look at it, it's just like it looks fucking amazing. They're not appropriating in any way. They're showing their appreciation and like how it can connect in some way. Yeah, so like so. This is why it makes me angry, right? Yeah. Because here in America, people will fucking try to cancel someone for doing that. I didn't even know that fucking existed. Uh. But, like, if that were to happen here in America, where, like, say, like, Arkansas had that, people would be losing their shit. But it's, like, it's all about trying to showcase and appreciate the different culture. And I don't think it's inherently wrong to try to showcase that. Like... I don't know. It, it, it's just, it's a wild thing to me yeah, that people At the get... end, I'll probably show you when I find it. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I would love to, to see that. Um, did you see it on TikTok? No, it was, it was like on, it was like YouTube down the line. Okay. It was right like on. one of those dark, not not dark, but uh, rabbit holes. Um, but yeah, so, but, uh, so for those who do have TikTok, we have a TikTok. Yeah. Um, we don't post a lot on there, but we're trying to figure out how to like add more stuff to there. Um, so if you guys are interested, you guys can follow us on the TikTok. Um, yeah, that's right. I said the TikTok because I'm that old. Uh, I don't even know what the fucker handle is. I think it's just Blood Drain. Honestly. Yeah, but oh! I think... ah! Copyright. Uh, yeah, so I'm on there. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on TikTok, just look up Blood Drain. Um, we're going to try to post some more behind the scene videos, uh, you know, with our studio and try to show you like our setup. Uh, and stuff like that for you know our board games and everything so if you guys are interested in that make sure to follow us on tiktok um but we are coming up towards the end of the episode so do you have any uh recommendations for people to watch this week the dark tower oh dude fuck yeah it's a fuck fucking yeah. good movie man they set it up for a sequel too if you really want to look about it they set it up for a sequel but i doubt that'll ever happen it's not gonna happen <laughs> For those of you who don't know what that is, The Dark Tower is based off of the book of the same name, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. It has Idris Elba, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly, Matthew McConaughey. It's just sort of right, like, right, Matthew right. McConaughey plays like his realms like the devil, in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Idris plays a guy named, just called the Gunslinger, which he's trying to stop the man in black, trying to take over where this kid's, uh, uh, hit the earth, uh, take it over for his own well-being and whatnot, and they just basically become friends at the end of it and it's just it's great it was one of them like one of the scenes was like does your world have guns and he just like stares at him it's like you're gonna love earth <laughs> yeah i think uh if you haven't read the book i think you'll really like the movie yeah um i know there was a lot of criticism uh in regards to the the adaptation mm-hmm. but i think if you haven't read the book that you will you will enjoy the movie um go in just expecting a, an interesting film um but yeah, no, yeah. That, that's a great recommendation. Uh, my recommendation is actually going to be Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It sounds stupid. I wanted to watch it. I swear I've always wanted to watch it. it is it, it good? I I really like the movie. I, I think it is a good like popcorn flick. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's just... It's a movie that you should watch because of the ridiculousness of it. Um, I will, I'll, I'll read what the synopsis is because that way you guys kind of get a little more, uh, information. So, uh, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States discovers vampires are planning to take over the United States. He makes it his mission to eliminate them. That's literally, that, that is the best way to sum up the, the, the movie. It is all the ridiculousness that you think it is. It sounds like it's something you'd watch on sci-fi. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> But yeah, so that's going to be my recommendation. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations for movies or TV shows, uh, please let us know in the comment section down below uh, or send us a DM. Uh, if you guys are interested in more of our content, make sure to go to bloodhaven.com for podcasts, merchandise, and more videos. Uh, make sure to follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, talk, follow us on Instagram. We're all available uh, at Bloodhaven uh, as well as Blood Drain. And your handle is bud1576. Yes. So make sure to follow us out on the socials. Uh, We'll reach out to everybody and we'll see you guys next week for a new episode. See ya.